Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters, your Magic the Gathering source that helps you command your budget. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support. Hey everyone, Mitch coming in from the Commander's Quarters studio. Welcome to the show. So, Commander Legends spoiler season is finally coming to an end, but we're not quite done with spoilers just yet. Uh, this morning, we've got uh, an amazing legendary creature, the very first legendary elephant, to my knowledge. I mean, outside of uh, Frankie Peanuts, who is, uh, is a uh, silver-bordered card. Uh, but yeah, the, uh, the very first legal uh, legendary elephant with Hamza, Guardian of Ration. A 5-5 elephant warrior that costs 4 green-white. This spell costs one less to cast for each creature you control, they plus plus one counter on it. Creature spells you cast cost one less to cast for each creature you control, they plus plus one counter on it. So, this is a really exciting commander that kind of wants you to get a lot of creatures out there with a lot of plus plus one counters, and yeah, uh, reduce the cost of more creatures that you cast. Hopefully, they're going to have more counter plus plus one counters on them. And then, yeah, you just basically cast a ton of creatures. It's kind of, it definitely reminded me a little bit of Animar, but nowhere near as broken. Uh, but definitely an interesting kind of plus plus one counters and go wide kind of strategy. Maybe you can get some tokens in there too. So yeah, that seems like a really exciting commander. One thing I do want to note is that a while back I did have an episode where I mentioned um, tribes that currently don't have a commander. And then I kind of gave suggestions for what that commander could be. Elephant was one of the tribes I mentioned. And the commander that I made for that one was Tuscany Loxa and Leader, which is kind of close actually to this design. Uh, not, no, nowhere near exact, you know, but it is, it is somewhat close. A 1-5 elephant for one green white. Uh, it says elephant spells you cast cost X sucks the cast where X is Tuscany's power. Tap an untap elephant you control. Tuscany locks and leader gains plus one plus one till on a turn. This one's more elephant centric, obviously, uh, just elephants, but it does, you know, have that mana reduction. So yeah, kind of, uh, interesting that it's, it's a pretty similar card, obviously just a coincidence, but, uh, yeah, I can see that, you know, Elephants are definitely usually uh, Selesnia, and it's kind of like a, a group-centric uh, kind of color, you know, uh, getting creatures out there, kind of benefiting all your creatures and that kind of stuff as well. So just interesting. Uh, Hamza, though, the way that I would build around Hamza, um, again, I mentioned kind of plus plus one counters, obviously. So let's start off with cards like Loyal Guardian, Feldar Retreat, and Cathar's Crusade. Wanting to get counters on all of your creatures and be able to consistently do that can be great for this kind of a deck, being able to reduce the cost of your creatures, again, Hamza says, creature spells you cast cost one less to cast for each creature you control a plus plus one counter on it. And Hamza actually costs less for those creatures as well. So you can help get around commander attacks as well if, uh, you know, you've got, if Hamza dies and then you've got a ton of creatures in play that self counters on them, you can get Hamza out pretty quickly. Loyal Guardian says, at the beginning of combat on your turn, if you control your commander, put a plus plus one counter on each creature you control. Uh, Feldar Retreat uh, has landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, choose one. Create a 2-2 two -two white uh, cat beast creature token. Or put a plus plus one counter on each creature you control. Those creatures gain vigilance until end of turn. This one is fantastic because, again, it can do both things for you. It can create tokens, and then it can get counters on creatures as well. So it can help you build up your board. And then, yeah, get those counters on those creatures so that you reduce the cost of your commander and your other creature spells too. A Cathar's Crusade is a fantastic one. Obviously, a great finisher as well. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus plus one counter on each creature you control. Yeah, that's an incredibly powerful thing, especially in a deck that's looking to go wide like this one. Uh, you, you can have some kind of one-off effects that can really help as well. Like an Ornreath the Vastwood. Uh, I guess it's a repeatable effect, but it, it's somewhat of a one-off one effect. And, and uh, let's just go through it. <laughs> it enters the battlefield tapped. You can tap for a green. You can tap to put a plus plus one counter on each green creature that enters the battlefield this turn. Obviously, this is a land, a great utility land for this deck. Just takes up one of your land slots. Uh, Pr Primeval Protector is another one that can really help kind of once, uh, but it's, it's a big body as well. It's a 10-10 for 10 and a green, but it costs one less to cast for each creature your opponent's control. When it enters the battlefield, put a plus plus one counter on each other creature you control. It doesn't get a counter itself, but it does give counters to all your other creatures. And yeah, it can be a 10-10 for uh, yeah, a green mana, so that's pretty powerful. Uh, Bloodspore Thrynax is another one that can help out too. A 2-2 two -two with Devour 1, uh, which basically means that when it comes into play, you can sacrifice any number of creatures, and then this creature enters the battlefield with that many plus plus one counters on it. 
Then each other creature you control enters the battlefield with an additional X plus plus one counters on it, where X is the number of plus plus one counters on Bloodsport Thrynax. So if you get a couple of counters on this, those other creatures coming in are already going to have counters on them, and they're going to be even bigger, making your army even more threatening. Uh, the uh, other kind of cards that you definitely want to consider for a deck like this are X spells, or uh, X creature spells, like Endless One, Capricopian, uh, Capricopian, I'm hoping I'm saying that one right, and then Hooded Hydra. Definitely kind of those Hydra type creatures that come into play with a lot of counters on them based on your how much you pay into X. Uh, Endless One you can essentially just cast for free with this deck if you really want to. Enters the battlefield with X plus one counters on it. Uh, again, because your commander is going to reduce the cost of your creature spells by basically the number of creatures that you have with counters. So yeah, this can cost zero and you can end up getting, you know, a 10-10 or so basically for free. Uh, Capricopian uh, enters the battlefield with X plus plus one counters on it. And then basically kind of has this little combat trick where if you swing at someone, they can pay two to basically make it swing at someone else and put a counter on it and so on and so forth. People can keep doing that. Uh, Hooded Hydra is a fantastic one for this deck especially. Comes into play with X plus plus one counters on it, but then when it dies, you create a 1-1 one -one snake creature token for each of those counters that was on it. So yeah, this one can help you out, you know, at first, you know, just as a big bodied creature. And then when it dies, it kind of basically just gives you an army, you know, by itself. And then if you get counters on that, that can really help you, you know, reduce the cost of your creatures and put you way ahead. So yeah, Hydras are definitely spells that you want to consider for this. Uh, Mycoloth is another card that can really help you out in this kind of a deck, getting more and more creatures. It has Devour too. And at the beginning of your upkeep, create a 1-1 one -one green separate creature token for each plus plus one counter on Mycoloth. So yeah, this one can really help you go wide and get you a ton of saplings. I mean, even just one, sometimes just even one upkeep trigger with this can get you an army on its own. And then, yeah, you're going to be off to the races from there. Uh, some other kind of benefits, uh, cards that benefit you for having creatures with plus plus one counters on them, like a Rish card, Pima Renegade, are, are ones that you're going to want to consider as well. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, you put a plus plus one counter on each of up to two target creatures, and each creature you control with a plus plus one counter on it has tap add green. This can help your deck get out of control very quickly. Again, you, you're already going to be reducing the cost of your creature spells with, you know, the number of creatures that you have with those counters on them. And then this just says, yeah, now you can just tap your creatures for mana as well to give you even more mana to have access to. Uh, Armorcraft Judge is a great way to draw with this kind of a deck. You draw a card for each creature you control that counter on it. And then Inspiring Call... Uh, is similar, but even better. Draw a card for each cr uh, creature you control a plus plus one counter on it. Those creatures gain indestructible on a turn. This can draw you, you know, 10 plus cards and give all your creatures indestructible. Yeah, that's a pretty fantastic card. Uh, and then also you want to consider kind of those, I guess, plus plus one counter lords, I would call them maybe. Uh, Tusk Guard Captain, Abzan Falconer, Abzan Battle Priest, there are other ones as well. But basically they say each creature you control with a counter on them gets something. Tusk Guard Captain gives Trample, Abzan Falconer gives Flying, Abzan Battle Priest gives Lifelink. Essentially just kind of buffing your entire army just for being on the board. A very powerful thing. So yeah, I really like the design of Hamza. You know, this is, is again, it reminds me of Animar-ish, you know, but a, a more fair Animar. I, I guess time will tell though. Uh, but no, I definitely think that's nowhere near as powerful as Animar. But a very kind of powerful, you know, go wide, plus plus one counter strategy can be a lot of fun like this. But yeah, now it's my turn to hear from you. So in the comments below, let me know what your thoughts on this commander are. What direction would you take it? What cards did I not mention that you would include in the deck? So yeah, let me know in the comments below. And as always, thanks again and have a good one.